In today's episode of Humble History, we will finish the second half of Emperor Minilik's biography. To continue where we left off, Minilik had just crowned himself as Emperor of Ethiopia. The following events take place following his coronation. Minilik was in hot water from the beginning. The Italians had supported him when he was a regional lord. Now that he became emperor, they were expecting favors in return. In 1889, Minilik signed a treaty with the Italians called the Treaty of Ujali. The treaty acted as a sign of friendship between the two states. It is important to note that this treaty was written in Amharic and Italian. The two versions had different messages when it came to Ethiopia's communication with Europe. Article 17 stands out in particular. The Amharic version of Article 17 states that Italy would act as a facilitator of Ethiopian messages to Europe if Ethiopia chose to use Italy. This made Italy a glorified postman. However, in the Italian version, it was mandatory for Ethiopia to use Italy in its correspondence to Europe, making Ethiopia a procreate. This could not stand with Minilik, and the Italians were not willing to make adjustments. In 1896, this would culminate in the Battle of Adwa. To understand the significance of Adwa, we need to step back and see what was happening between the two continents. Europe had been systematically taking over African countries as their colonies. Their weapons at the time were far more advanced than their African counterparts. Therefore, Italy's victory was a foregone conclusion. This was something that the Italians believed was well and something the Ethiopians used to their advantage. The first of the three battles between the two forces took place at Amba Alagi. The Italians sent a small army to meet the Ethiopians. They believed that Minili could not muster up an army of over 30,000 troops and they would have been poorly armed. They would later discover that their underestimation was partly due to Minilik's use of double agents and spies. At Amba Alage, there were 120,000 troops from the Ethiopian side, and Minilik had used alliances with Russia to acquire the latest firearms at the time. Outnumbered and outgunned, the Italians at Amba Alage were easily defeated. The next battle was at the city of Makali where the Italians had a fortified base. The first day of battle ended with major Ethiopian losses as the Italians' fort proved to be impregnable. The Ethiopians switched tactics and cut off all water and food supply from the fort which trapped the Italians. This lasted for a few days before the Italians sent a message of surrender. The final battle was at a small town of Adwa. Adwa was a strategically important location as it allowed Minilik to draw the Italians far from their fortified base and into open terrain. Now with larger numbers and modern firearms, all the advantages were for the Ethiopians. The battle began at dawn and was over in the afternoon. The Italian army surrendered and later the Italian government terminated the Wuch Ali Treaty. Ethiopia became the only African country to remain independent in the age of colonization. To learn more about the Battle of Adwa, you can watch this video here. After Adwa, Minilik had to play a balancing act with other European powers. Defeating the Italians did not mean that another European country would not come to take its place. In a game of diplomacy, Minilik had to satiate the needs of the English who were afraid of the French taking Ethiopia and the needs of the French who were afraid of the English taking Ethiopia. Minilik's capricious existence with the Europeans proved successful. He lived out the rest of his life without European invasion and expanded the Ethiopian territories further. It was during this time that Minilik moved his capital to Addis Ababa, which remains Ethiopia's capital to this day. It was in this time that we see the creation of the first modern bank in Ethiopia, as well as modern schools. 
He also initiated large infrastructure projects such as the first telegram and telephone lines as well as Ethiopian Djibouti Railway. Starting from 1904, Munilik experienced health problems. He was only in his 60s but his previous health conditions were adding up. In 1906, he began to experience a series of strokes. His last remaining challenge was the question of succession. He had originally planned for his cousin Ras Makonnen to succeed him. Unfortunately, Ras Makonnen died of cancer in 1906. As Minilik's health began to deteriorate, he chose his grandson Iyasu, who was only a child at the time, to be the next king. Minilik experienced more and more strokes and in 1913, his health failed him for the last time and he passed away in his palace. Minilik's expansion shaped the current Ethiopian landscape. His move to Addis Ababa remains as significant as the city remains the capital of Ethiopia to this day. His leadership in the victory of Adwa puts him in a category of his own as he remains the only African ruler who defeated European invasion. All this and more make Minilik one of the most important figures in modern Ethiopian history. That's it for today's episode of Humble History. Stay tuned for more on Minilik's reign as Emperor of Ethiopia. Please like and subscribe for more videos on African history and mythology. I'm your host Ifrata Wargu, and this episode was written by Adam Salu. We'll see you on the next episode.